All right guys, Papa Pepper back once again on the Abundant Harvest Homestead. You know, I once worked for a company where the CEO, I think it was the CEO, he was only the CEO because he said that he once tried retirement and he hated it. Now personally, I'd think I'd be able to retire tomorrow and definitely find enough to keep me busy because there's always stuff to do, always something to work on, and sometimes it's just a matter of getting the projects done in time. Right now, I'm actually about two weeks behind where I personally would ideally be wanting to do this project, but I'm gonna be pruning a couple apricot trees today. Now I have plum trees already that are flowering, some of them, some of them aren't. I have peach trees that are already flowering. Again, some of them are, some of them aren't, depending on the variety. But these apricots, I want to be pruning. I definitely want to cut them back. They're here in my main garden area, and they're part of a three-story section of perennial food. At the ground level, we have strawberries, and then at the bush level, we have currants, and then above it, we're gonna have these apricots. But I wanna always be able to walk up to the tree and pick the fruit off. I don't wanna have to be using poles with little claws or climbing on ladders or lifting kids on my shoulders, that type of thing. So I'm gonna be cutting them back, and I'm actually gonna be cutting them back rather drastically. One thing I'm gonna be using is these Weiss scissors. They are amazing. I think I got them for like $7.99 at Tractor Supply, but you can cut through just about anything with these. Be very careful. And then I'm also going to be using some of my old pruning shears. Um, I can't find some of the other ones. These ones look a little bit rusty, a little beat up. So we're just going to make sure that we're not passing any disease onto these plants right now. We're going to take some isopropyl alcohol, soak a little paper towel with it, and then clean these up. Just the surfaces that are going to come in contact with these plants, especially the inside of the plant too, we're going to be just cleaning. I'm going to let them sit there for a moment, take a look at these now, and then we're going to get to the project. Oh, it's just about to start budding. I see four buds on this one actually. And they're going to be beautiful, they're going to be pink, it's going to be a very attractive tree. That's the smaller of the two. Here's the larger of the two. I don't see any buds starting on this yet, but it is alive. It is starting to wake up for the spring. I would have wanted to do this a bit ago, but I didn't have the opportunity. I simply did get it done before I went to Michigan and uh, then spent a week there. So I'm actually going to be cutting this back where I'm just building up a base the first couple of years of this tree, letting it get its roots established and making sure that this tree is nice and strong. I have seen trees that are so heavy laden, they're actually propped up with two by fours and stuff because they get so much fruit on such young branches, they're actually falling apart and uh, being destroyed just by the weight of their own fruit. Now this one here is probably at least eight to nine feet tall at the tips. I'm gonna do some serious cutting on this guy. But again, this is only a two-year-old plant for me. I got it as a young, just starting uh, seedling, you know, a dormant little uh, plant. And it's only been here for two years. This one's the same, but it's also very, uh, it's, for some reason, it's, it's significantly smaller than the other one. So I'm going to be kind of focusing on, there's got three main ones on this side and three main ones on this side. I'm going to leave it pretty open and just let it grow out from there. I'm looking forward to see what this does. I should have pruned it already, but since we haven't, we're going to do it now. So here's a before on this one. Let's get to business and see what it looks like after. It looks a lot different now. So if you take a look at it now, it's maybe six feet tall, so it lost at least three feet off. 
it's really open a lot of stuff has been removed if you notice me doing a lot of snipping down here and not really grabbing anything that's because the new growth the little guys kind of grow out like thorns at first so i was snipping a lot of those off i was keeping kind of some of the structure i wanted some of the stuff i wanted going on and then i did save a whole bucket of these and there's some extra ones on the ground That'll come in handy later in my life. But right now I got this first one pruned up. It is looking good. It's where I want it. If it'll just kind of continue from here and have this be the base, and there's a good chance I'll pretty much prune it back to the same type structure next year as well. And then maybe start letting it grow out a little bit from there. But a number of things you gotta take into consideration is, you know, this is my fruit tree. There's certain things I'm looking to do with it that others may not. So I'm gonna prune it a certain way because I've got a path right here. I've got a path right here. I've got some other things growing around it. I've got stuff growing underneath it. So there's certain things with accessibility, with just walking around it, with who it's casting shade on, how much shade it's providing, and stuff like that that I've got to take into consideration as I go. Um, hoping to get this guy pruned back and then we'll see. Maybe I'll let a couple of those ones that are flowering. Uh, not that it's not gonna flower anyway, but grow a little bit and see what happens so this guy is going to be quite a bit different too i will uh just kind of give you this as the before and then i'll snip it up and then come back with an after so right now they're about neck and neck for height and this one will be kind of significantly reduced as well when i get done snipping it so a couple things i do want to mention while i'm on the subject too is when i'm making my upper cuts on the end of the branches I make them at an angle, that way it helps them shed water better. If I make it completely flat, water is more likely to sit on top of there, and that could lead to, you know, rot, disease, other things. So I make them at an angle to help them shed water. And then one thing I look for is kind of the positioning of the branches. You can see this one's a good strong V, this one's a good strong V. There's already some I'm finding on this tree that I would keep because I don't mind the position, but it's just when they come out at a 90 degree angle, I don't want that long term, especially when it's pointing directly at the path. If it was at a 45 degree angle heading on up, I'd keep it, but that's not where we're at. Almost done with this one, so I'm going to finish this up and I'll be back and mention a couple other things that's worth thinking about. So of all those buds that were flowering, actually only two made the final cut. And that's fine. Also if you looked at this tree, which is now just barely taller than me, compared to this one, this one doesn't have many that are very thin left on it. It had much more structure to it, so I didn't remove, um, so I was able to remove a lot more of the little ones. This one didn't have as much structure to it. It's not exactly ideal the way I like it, but I can prune it more next year. I can let it grow this growing season, see what it does, and continue to kind of craft and see what works best for the plants. Really happy with this one, and uh, we'll see how it does in the future. But you'll notice as well, I now have two five gallon buckets of cuttings from these trees. So cuttings from these trees are called scions and these are still the majority dormant. One cool thing about apricots, which are the trees I'm dealing with here, is they're a member of the stone fruit family. So you have things like cherries, plums, apriums, plumcots, uh, peaches, nectarines. All those are different stone fruits. There is wild plums growing on my property that were here before we moved on. And what I'm gonna do is they don't fruit very well. So I'm gonna graft in some of these apricots and see if they don't take. And then we can turn that plum tree, wild plum tree into an apricot tree. And in fact, there's a couple other things I might try grafting into it as well. So guys, hopefully that was worthwhile for you. These are much shorter now. They're going to work well. Again, these are planted pretty much in the center of my garden, so there's a number of things I have to take into consideration with growing a tree in the middle of my garden, especially when it's not a dwarf or a semi-dwarf variety. These are gonna be pruned back a certain way that they'll always hopefully work well here as they continue to grow and become established. They'll be real kind of, I think, picturesque, especially in the spring. You saw how pretty those pink blossoms were gonna be. This is an archway. It's kind of one of the focal points coming into the garden and then hopefully to have three layers of food come through that one raised bed for years to come is very exciting for me. So hopefully you guys learned a couple things. Hopefully that was beneficial. Um, if you've got any tips, anything I overlooked, anything else I should think about, let me know. But we'll see you next time. Papa out.